Okay, I'm going to show you how to uh, hook up and uh, demonstrate some of the properties of a IGBT. We're also going to show you how to test one. So really when you hook it up, you're, you'll actually be able to test it too. So here's an IGBT. This IGBT is actually a G50N60. I don't know if you can read that or not. And uh, this is a 600 volt, 75 amp IGBT. And the pinout for the IGBT is gate collector emitter. Okay, so one strange thing about IGBTs is they are a combination of a MOSFET and a standard bipolar junction transistor. So the symbol really kind of makes sense because you still have an emitter and a collector on an IGBT, but you have a gate drive instead of a base. So that's really the only difference between an IGBT and a MOSFET is that the MOSFET has a drain and a source and an IGBT has a collector and emitter. And there's a reason why this device has a special place in electronics. It has the the good properties of a bipolar junction transistor and also the good properties of a MOSFET all rolled into one. So let's hook it up real quick and the way we're going to hook it up is basically this way. We're going to take the IGBT, hook the collector to our motor and the motor is going to go to the positive terminal of a 12 volt battery and then we're going to hook the emitter to ground and the IGBT will switch on and off this motor when we apply um, a drive to the gate. Now the way we're going to drive the gate is just by touching it with our fingers and touching the positive terminal of the battery to turn it on, touch it with our fingers and touch ground to turn it back off again. They're very sensitive devices. For this particular device, the typically the drain is in the center. Oh, the, not the drain, but in this particular case the collector is in the center and that's going to our motor. So if this was a MOSFET, this would be our drain, but for an IGBT, this is our collector. And our emitter is hooked up to the last lead on the right for this particular device. Um, if I touch, I'm going to pull the gate up. And if I touch the gate and touch the positive terminal of the battery, the motor starts to turn. And I'll touch the negative terminal of the battery and we'll drain off that charge on the gate and the motor will shut off. So we can test it pretty easily just by doing this. Um, and I showed in an, uh, another video, a MOSFET video, how you can actually turn the device on with uh, static electricity. So here's a device called a fun fly stick and I can get this close to the IGBT and I can turn it on. And if I touch the IGBT, I can drain that charge back off again because this uh, device here is really just taking and pulling electrons from the tip of the device making them concentrate here on this metal ring and since my thumb is touching the metal ring those electrons are being pumped into my body so when I bring this close I pull electrons from the, uh, the gate and the way that they're pulled off there is kind of interesting because they actually, because there's a point there, they're actually able to jump across to the stick and in order, in order to replenish those electrons again I just have to touch the gate and keep the thing on and I start to pull these electrons back off again and I'm really just putting them into, into the air. So that's kind of fun to show that property of MOSFETs and IGBTs. So this is a single device. It's a device in a, uh, a single body device. It's one device in a package. Um, if you wanted to check a bigger device, then you can look at a monster like this. So this is actually two IGBTs in one package. And the schematic for this device uh, looks like this. It actually has two devices that are in sort of a totem pole arrangement. So the collector of one device is connect connected to the emitter of the other device. And this is what we call a half bridge. 
we have two gates, gate one and gate two, and this is the way they're labeled on the on the module, this brick module. All right, so to test this, we really want to test each IGBT individually. So our IGBT has you got to be careful here. I don't want to short this out against the battery. So as far as my schematics concerned, I'm going to check the top IGBT first. So we're going to check uh, the one, the IGBT that has uh, C1 and E1. All right, on this particular module here, C1 is right here. So this is actually C1, and this screw is loose. I'm going to tighten that up. So this is C1. This is our collector of uh, the top IGBT. So we're going to hook that up um, in series with our motor. And E1 is over here on this side. This actually says E1C2. So these are the common con connection between C1 and E2, which is on my diagram right here. Common connection between um, C2 and E1 is right here. So my C2 and E1 are connected right here. So right now I've got C1 connected, and C1 is connected, the other side of C1 is connected to E1, which is over here. So this is going to be my emitter. And on the, on the sides here are our gates. And we also have access to E1 and E2 from the gates because you would typically drive the device by applying a voltage between um, G1 and E1 and um, G1 and E1 and E2, or G2 and E2. What we're going to do is just hook a lead into G1 since we're test testing the top IGBT. So I'm just going to push a lead into here. And if I hold on to that lead and touch the positive terminal of the battery, I can get the motor to turn. And if I shift over and touch the negative terminal of the battery, I should be able to turn it off. So this is testing the top IGBT. So we've already verified by doing this that this IGBT, E1, C1, and G1, are okay. Now we're going to shift and check the second IGBT in the brick. So to do that, our, we're going to hook C2, E2, and G, G2 together, or we're going to use those pins. So our C2 is now over here. And I'll show you the drawing here in a minute so you can see that. Okay. Our C2 is the common connection between E1 and C2. That's one connection. And our E2 is now over here. So this will test E2 and C2 I've got hooked up right now. Now I've got to put a signal onto G2, which is the red connection right over here. So if I touch this and touch the positive terminal of the battery, I get my motor turning again. And if I touch the negative terminal, I can shut it off. So on, off. Now, let's see if uh, our fly stick will turn that on. And there it goes. Takes it a while. This is a large IGBT, so it takes a while to build up enough charge to get that to turn on. IGBTs take a lot of current for a short period of time to get them charged up. So now I'm going to touch the negative terminal of the battery and shut it off. So there you have it. Two IGBTs, a single IGBT, and a large brick containing two IGBTs. I uh, hope this helped. And let me know if you've got some ideas for some other videos you'd like to see.